My name is Steve Liebman. I'm the ambassador for the Get the Life You Love campaign and I'm your MC. Hi, gang. How are you? <laughs> do you remember us at all, anybody, from a long time ago? You do. That Look means you're that. watching TV already. <laughs> <laughs> now, is everybody awake? Yes? Yeah. yeah, that's what we like to hear. Well, Lydia's going to start our little um, chat off first, and then I'm going to come in a little bit later. So it's all yours. Well, um, when we first got contacted by Get the Life You Love, we were quite... Um, surprised because normally we get to ask to perform but today they asked us if we could tell tell you guys about our story um, so basically they said how did you how do you change so quickly <laughs> but we're not going to tell you that today um, they actually asked us how did you create a career out of thin air um, and so that's what we're here to do to tell you today um, basically Gavin and I travel around the world and we do quick change. Um, it may surprise you to hear that we, that's what we do as a career. Um, we do actually fly around the world to do 10 minutes of a routine and it's a full-time career for us. But um, it's not just about the quick change, it's actually everything else that goes behind it. Um, it's taken us, we've been dancing together for since 1996. We started off as competitive ballroom dancers and from there we um, took the what we loved our passion um, to a next level and now we're doing this full-time can you believe it <laughs> so really we don't have a job because we love what we do and um, the best thing is getting up in the morning every day and looking forward to flying to the other side of the world meeting exciting people and doing well, what the, we love. The, the flights are a little <laughs> bit long sometimes. But also too, just in, in saying this, Lydia actually has a marketing degree as well. So it, it's, it's kind of, she didn't know that she was going to actually venture into the arts side of it. And um, so she got the, the degree and then decided we were going to go to London and um, train with the world's best in London with dancing. And, um, and that kind of gave us a bit of an insight to how hard it is and um, the sacrifices that you have to make with, with choosing a passion. And that's probably the biggest thing, is finding your passion and finding what you love to do. Um, and that, for us, we were very lucky. We found that. And as Lydia was saying, we've been able to mould it and actually do something with our passion and with what we love to do and um, and that is something that we urge everybody in this room and and everybody else to to find what you love I mean that is the the biggest thing because don't let people tell you that you can't it, it won't work I mean we got told by two different industries the dancing industry and the magic industry because what we do is classified magic and uh, we got told it, you can't do it it's impossible to join these two art forms together. Well, hopefully what you saw then and what you remember seeing, uh, we've proved them all wrong. And it's only because of we, we had the passion there, we had the love for what we wanted to do in the dancing aspect, and we've just put a twist on it. So we've actually thought outside the box. 
And that's a big key too. In whatever you choose to do, whether it's in, say, if you want to be a, a doctor or a secretary or, you know, whatever you choose to do, you have to be the, the best of it and make sure that you find something else to offer on top of what you do. For, so, for example, we didn't want to just be dancers. We wanted pe to be dancers that could change in two seconds. You know, if you want to be a secretary, you know, why don't you be a secretary that can type a hundred more words more than the one next to you, sitting next to you, you know? Find, find something, think outside the box and be better than the normal in that position that you're choosing to be in, in the career that you're choosing to be in. And that will get you noticed as well because um, people always look for something different. And in this industry, it, it's a cutthroat industry. You know, when, when you guys come out into the real world to work and you realise that um, it is hard out there. There are lots of challenges. There are, there's always someone better than you. And, um, you know, but you, you cannot, you, all you have to do is look forward, always look ahead and always be the best that you can be. And you've also got, like, on the road to get to where you want to get to. I mean, for us, we, don't, we still, now we have no idea where the road's going to lead us to the next thing that's going to happen um, in our in our journey and that's probably the best part as well in always thriving to make it better um, and that is something that you never look never look behind you to see who's behind you nipping at your your backside always look ahead and always look at the person that's in front of you trying to to pass that person and if you if you think of that all the time it, it's it makes life much easier and one of the biggest questions that um, we were asked too was you know, how, what were the challenges that got us here? So we started in 1996. We were competitive ballroom dancers. Um, we decided we wanted to, I, I didn't want to do the, my, I didn't want to work in marketing. I thought it was horrible. <laughs> Sorry if you're choosing to study that. I just didn't like the cutthroat industry and all that. I wanted to dance and that's all I wanted to do. Gavin as well. I was so lucky to find a partner like him. He wanted to, to do the same thing. <laughs> um, so we actually decided, to, when we retired from competitive dancing, we decided to actually go on cruise ships and teach and perform on ships. Um, and at the time, dance teams, that's what they were called, um, they usually go on and they teach, you know, the cha-cha, the rumba, the samba, um, and then you do a show. But we didn't want to just do a show. We actually created a, a headline show, which was a 30-minute show. Absolutely killed us. We couldn't walk for days after we performed that. And um, so we would do a show, one show a cruise, and then the rest of the time we would teach and um, then we would enjoy the ports. You know, we would do the cocktail parties and, the, you know, we lay on the beach for hours and that's that's the, that's the... That was the work, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, hard work, but that somebody had to work. do it. Somebody had to do it. Yeah, that was the hard part. Um, and, um, yeah, so we did that. Ten, and then we, we thought we did quick change back then. In our 30-minute show, we, we actually um, – we would have a wall. We built a wall. And we had this vision that for every dance – like, I don't know, do you guys watch Dancing with the Stars? Are you familiar with the dancers? So for every dance, there's actually a theme to it. So, you know, the Paso Doble comes from Spain. So, you know, we would – Gavin would come out in this sexy matador outfit. and yeah, Not anymore. Not anymore. Fancy cape routine. <laughs> Definitely not anymore. He's not really that fit anymore. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank so you. for every dance, we had a vision that we wanted to change into a different costume. We worked hard with the lighting techs and all that and we created the scene and, you know, we would run behind this wall and we would I would I thought I changed really quickly. So it would take Lydia around about thirty seconds to forty seconds to change. And then when Lydia would come out, she would come out with her dress half on and half off and you know, one arm would be out, one arm would be in and and you know, so it, it, it was a problem. So we actually had a, a magic friend of ours on the ship that actually said to us, why don't you put quick change in your show? And I said, I do. I do it in 30 seconds. Who cares if I don't really get my dress on right? At least I'm changed, right? So yeah, well, The gentleman <laughs> in the audience liked it, I'll tell you. <laughs> so carry on. So then after that, what happened was it took three years of research, finding the right people to actually design the costumes, then finding somebody to actually make them. So three years 
and a lot of um, a lot of money and a lot of heartache through that. We found people in Paris. We brought the costumes back home, and none of them worked because they were built for magicians. They were not built for dancers, as we were wanting to dance in them. So we were the only couple in the world that actually wanted to join these two art forms together, and that was. Nobody else had even thought of doing it before. So we couldn't actually call anybody up and go, uh, help, uh, how do we do this? Um, we actually then had to scrap the costumes that we got made in Paris and then redesign the whole thing again. And that's where and Lydia came by the in. way, that cost us a house as well. Yeah, so we had a choice <laughs> of buying a house or putting the money into this act. And that was... We're pleased that we chose the road that we chose, and that's um, so. Basically, we put the we trained somebody to to make the costumes, and and then we went back out onto a, a cruise ship to tweak it to make it better. And then in '07, the Australia's Got Talent um, approached us to come onto the show. So then we then went onto the show and had no idea what was going to happen. That was another road, basically, another path that the door opened and we decided to walk through it. And that's another thing that we'll say now as well, is a lot of opportunities come, come up, but you've got to be willing to actually take them and actually walk through the door. A lot of people don't like to. They, they, they tend to stay, stay back because they... They don't know the unknown. So they're like, ooh, I don't want to do that, you know. So be, have the courage to actually walk through those doors, okay. And also if you love what you're doing, you will have that courage. So that's the biggest key, okay. You have to love and love and breathe and live what you do, whatever you do. So then after we did the Australia's Got Talent, all of a sudden a whole new world opened up for us. It actually put us into the corporate market which we had no idea existed. So we would spend 10 months a year on a cruise ship doing our show and doing everything on that that we love to do because we didn't know what existed um, outside that. So all of a sudden now the corporate markets open up. Now we do two weeks a year on cruise ships and the rest of the time now we're flying here, there and everywhere just doing 10 minutes, not... 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so now and, and hence that's why the belly is getting a little bigger now because I only do 10 minutes okay so but I still lift Lydia up above my head so now how do you find a passion how do you find something that you love to do that's it that's it you've got to try different things okay that is the biggest thing because how do you know what you love or what you're going to love at the end of the day. You don't. So if you try different things and, and you know, develop and, and persist in things, you know, so many times that we wanted to give the dancing up, we, we didn't. We kept going and that's the biggest key. We're probably one of the, the only couples in Australia that have actually been together for so long and still together to this day. So that's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> So thank you very much. Good luck, guys. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs>